if you've ever seen one of these cases, it should um, be instantly obvious to you that this cat has a tracheal tear. Um, it's very striking when you see that. They feel like bubble wrap when you pet them. They can look like a blimp. Incidentally, this cat belong, belongs uh, to a vet. Uh, and one of her own technicians intubated that cat. So another very interesting um, situation. So tracheal tears in cats. This is, without any question, one of the top 10 complaints at PLIT. We, as a profession, including techs, tend to see intubation and insufflation of the balloon or the cuff as, as routine, something we do every day, so it's routine. Unfortunately, it can lead to some very sticky situations, including deadly. And again, they're preventable by following very simple steps. Um, one study, which is referenced at the end, if you if you if you want to look into this more uh, thoroughly, one study um, looked into this. So, um, interestingly, the signs can occur within a few hours after the anesthesia episodes, but sometimes it can take a few days. So you can send a perfectly um, seemingly healthy cat home. And then a day or two later, the cat uh, looks like a blimp. So all of them have some to emphysema. But again, that's how they feel like bubble wrap. Um, only a fraction of them have um, dyspnea or strider. So it takes a little bit of um, clinical judgment and intuition, um, mostly based on the appearance of the cat and respiratory signs, and again, subterranean emphysema, and history, history. There's a recent history of intubation. Um, on x-rays, there's always going to be subterranean emphysema in the neck, simply because of the location of the tear. Occasionally, there's also a pneumothorax and or a pneumomediastinum. It all depends on where the tear is and which way the air is going to go. 